who reopened her hair salon after lockdown. My customers, some of them don't actually know that I play football until I tell them. <laughs> it's like I'm living a double life. <laughs> um, so when I do, they're like, what? Arsenal? Really? Goes the, cup. the Gunners have lifted the trophy a record 14 times. For Gillingham women, who reformed as an independent club last summer after they were let go by the men's side, it's a dream draw after a difficult year. Incredible that we're going to go and play Arsenal on Sunday uh, after the torrid time we've had both in lockdown and before we broke away. So it's just, it's just a way for everybody to celebrate where, where we've come in such a short period of time. Highs and lows reflected in the history of the women's game. Despite attracting huge crowds, women were banned from playing on FA pitches a century ago, a ban lasting 50 years. Now pre-COVID crowds at cup finals reach over 40,000. And this week marks 10 years since the Women's Super League, the all-professional top tier, was created. But there's a way to go. The bottom has almost got to catch up with the top. We've got to take care of the grassroots game. That is the future of the game. We've got to ensure that there is sustainability and, you know, it's stable to allow those young girls the opportunity to play. Brighton and Hove Albion face fellow top tier side Bristol City on Sunday. The Seagulls are safe in the top flight with a recent run of form and are now bidding for some silverware. Every player wants to win the FA Cup. It's the one other than the league. They want to, they want to win the FA Cup. Strange results happen. It's... A day you've got to be on your best because anything can happen. And Gillingham will be hoping exactly that. Juliet Parkin, BBC South East Today. Time now for a look at the weekend weather. Nina Ridge is with us. Is it going to warm up? <laughs> no sign of any great warmth, it has to be said. But at least it's dry and at least we've got some sunshine. This has been the scene through the day today. Very little change over the weekend. Temperatures really struggling, particularly at night. We will continue with the theme of overnight frosts. For tonight, with those clear skies, temperatures possibly down as low as minus two to minus three degrees for the early hours. And there is the risk of some patchy mist and fog forming, but that won't last long tomorrow morning. It will quickly clear away and then we've got some good spells of sunshine. Always the brightest skies during the morning into the afternoon. A little bit of fair weather cloud will tend to build up and temperatures 11 to 12 degrees with light winds. It's then a dry and clear evening, allowing those temperatures to drop sharply once again, getting quite widely close to freezing through Sunday morning. Again, Sunday, bright skies to begin the day. There is a weather front that's trying to come in from the west. So Sunday afternoon, that may just throw ahead a little more cloud, but still dry and still bright. And possibly those temperatures again, 12 to 13 degrees. Now, little will change as we start next week into Monday. High pressure holding on, possibly a little less cold. But then this weak weather front moving through on Tuesday might just bring a little bit of patchy rain. But once it clears away, we're then back to some northerly winds. So for the end of next week, it's still looking on the chilly side, Ellie. Oh dear, oh dear. Thank you, Nina. That's it from me. I'm back with your late news at 10.30. In the meantime, we'll leave you with a look at Leeds Castle. Good night.